You could call it an anti-special if you want, but I'll be honest with you, I just wanted to capture a real stand-up experience. Um, and it's over multiple nights throughout this past year. And I just wanted to capture it as real as possible. You know, there's no hyped up audience, there's no giant camera crew, there's no smoke machines, there's no crane shots, there's no audience reaction shots. I try to film it so it's just as real as an experience as you can get and it's just you sitting in a little room and, and watching a show. I do a lot of charity work, anyone else? You seem like great people. <laughs> America is the greatest country in the United States. <laughs> Let's go to the stats. We don't need it. We're Americans. We're strong. <laughs> when I'm president, I'm going to make college free. But you got to pay for high school. <laughs> Racism, where do you stand? For or against it? <laughs> A lot of undecided. Hey, it's Judah Friedlander here in what they call the Flatiron District, New York City. All right, I know you're tired. Right next to a beautiful, I'm not tired, right next to a beautiful city bank. Uh, there should be a, a Chase Bank right next door and a Wells Fargo as well. It's a beautiful city. Just bank, next to bank, next to bank, which is all inside of CVS, which is inside another bank. That's New York. Starbucks. Maybe one of those two. Good point. But, uh, well, we've got some big news for folks watching. Oh, yeah, no, I have a, a stand up special uh, called America is the Greatest Country in the United States. It's, uh, which is also one of the jokes that's in the special. It's 84 minutes. I filmed it and directed it and uh, performed it and wrote it, obviously. It's stand up. And uh, it's all satire on American exceptionalism, uh, as well as U.S. domestic and foreign policy, hitting all the, the big issues of uh, the nation. Uh, racism, sexism, mass incarceration, health care, climate change, and just uh, satirizing all those things. And I think one of the reasons we have so many of these issues, in addition to white supremacy and all these things is American exceptionalism. In general, we always think we're the best at everything. And when you think you're the best at everything, that kind of blinds you from seeing any problems that we, that we might have. So that, it's a, American exceptionalism is a big enabler of different problems and issues that we have. So, but it's a comedy about all that stuff. Well, there's a lot going on 2017 pick up any newspaper there's a lot happening any any thoughts on uh, some of these uh, isms that are coming to the fore well I think one thing that's good is that more people are getting aware and active of issues that are going on you know I don't know what percentage of people are bad people uh, or what percentage are, are good people but I knew I do know that like the really bad people, they tend to be very vocal and uh, very active. And there's a lot of people who may not be bad people, but they just kind of, they kind of stay quiet. They don't really do that much. And more people, who are good people need to be more active. It's like an eyes wide shut type scenario. People, people. I'm not sure if I know that reference, but. If that's what you say, I will. Well, people, I will agree. people, they choose to see what they choose to see. They pick. Yes, and Isn't many it? people aren't even aware. There's many people who are willing, willing, willingly ignorant, you know. And then there are people who really just aren't aware of it. I mean, life is tough no matter who you are, you know. Very busy people are in life. And sometimes people are too busy to focus on the really big, important issues. You get, you get caught just trying to survive. And it's a capitalist society. It's not easy to get by, you know. So. Uh, when everyone's just working all the time just to make rent and make everything else, sometimes it might be harder to uh, fight for human rights. So is that the foe? Is it, is it capitalism versus socialism versus this way of living? Or is it just why can't we all just get along? Or, like where, where do you see Those it? are great questions. I think those are all ingredients in 
the issues, but I don't know. Sometimes I think many humans are wired for fear. Fear is a very strong thing. And then out of fear sprouts hate. And and then you throw in narcissism. It's, uh, it's really hard to defeat, you know. So it's tricky. I don't have all the answers. So people, people are playing on our fears to control Definitely. Whatever the situation I think that's, you know, unfortunately one of the big parts of humanity. You know. Isn't it? Some, some of the stuff we let slide, but some of it seems to be pure evil has reared its ugly head. I mean, I, it just, I've never seen it like I mean, that. I think, you know, unfortunately, much of the way capitalism works, uh, part of its business model is fucking people over, you know? Look at uh, what slavery was in this country. That was part of capitalism, you know? Is that saying all capitalists are white supremacists? Theoretically, no, I'm not saying that. But if you look at how it actually worked, that was a big part of it, you know? No, but what look I'm at saying... mass incarceration now. It's like, you know, there were for-profit prisons. That's insane. So I'm just saying, like, it just seems like there was sort of a social contract that worked. Like, if you did this, then you could expect the government to give this to you or you'd have a certain amount of security in your life if you did certain things within a social contract. And now it just seems like everybody is out for themselves and, and we're, we're also to blame because we're all staring at our iPhones and our devices like that guy behind us. And, oh. You know, we're all, we're all caught up in our own thing. Yeah, well, that way. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think there's, with more technology out there, there are more people who have been oppressed who you can hear their voices now. I think there are many people, I mean, you know, people talk about the 1950s, it was so great for everyone, you know, but it wasn't great for everyone. There was a lot of people, it was, it was horrendous, uh, but they didn't have a national voice. And with, with this, the cell phone, uh, many people now have a, a national voice. So it's, 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 it's pretty amazing. I think more people are getting woken up to what is going on. Well, thank you, Steve Jobs, who are out in heaven. So America is the greatest country in the United States. Mm -hmm. Where can we see it, sir? Uh, Netflix starts on Halloween. It starts streaming on Netflix. October 31st, worldwide, theoretically, on Netflix. And I basically made it myself and then licensed it to Netflix. It's black, it's black and white. Black. It's very low budget, uh, kind of a documentary style. It's different than other specials. And uh, there's no skits at the beginning or anything. It's just 84 minutes of nonstop stand-up. This is your first time that you've put out a whole special. It is. I've been doing stand-up since 1989. I should have had several out by now. But for various reasons, from creative control to legal control, I have not put them out before, but now I have. Hollywood's racist. Anyone know what the first Hollywood blockbuster ever made was? Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation, 1915, based on a book called The Klansman. And in the movie, the KKK are the good guys. Maybe Hollywood should be like, yep, we fucked up on that one, sorry. <laughs> start a dialogue. At least then there's a chance things can get better. And a lot of the black people in the movie are actually white people in blackface. Hollywood should be like, yep, we fucked up there too. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes Hollywood will take a white show and make it even whiter. Does anyone remember the show Everybody Loves Rain? <laughs> the lead actor, Italian American, dark brown hair. His wife on the show, dark brown hair. There are three little kids on the show, all blonde. If you're ever in trouble, just say world champion and I'll show up to defend you. It's Judah Friedlander, the world champion, and you are watching Real Black. Why? Because you're a winner. Hey, Flash, you want? I got some chicken. Come on, right